the festival of unleavened bread. This is called the Passover when we say the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the legal experts were looking for a way to kill Jesus because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went out to the temple with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard, how he could hand Jesus over to them. They were divided around him for him. He agreed and began looking for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them. A time when the crowds would be absent. The day of unleavened bread arrived. When the Passover had to be sacrificed, Jesus sent Peter and John with this task, go and prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. He's, they said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus replied, when you go into the city, a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room already furnished. Make preparations there. They went and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the time came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the disciples joined him, and the apostles joined him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I assure you, I tell you, I won't eat it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. After taking a cup and giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. I assure you that from now on I won't eat from the, I tell you that from now on I won't drink from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom has come. After taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, this cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, my betrayer is with me. His hand is on this table. I tell you, sorry, the human one goes just as it has been determined. But how terrible it is for that person who betrays him. They began to argue among themselves about which of them it could possibly be who could do this. An argument broke out among the, among the disciples over which one of them should be regarded of, as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles rule over their subjects and those in authority over them are called friends of the people. But that's not the way it will be with you. Instead, the greatest among you must become like a person of lower status and a leader like a servant. So which one is greater, the one who is seated at the table or the one who serves at the table? Isn't it the one who is seated at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are the ones who have continued with me in my trials and I confer royal power on you, just as my father granted royal power to me. Thus you will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones overseeing the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, look, Satan has asserted the right to sift you all like wheat. However, I have prayed for you that your faith won't fail. When you have returned, strengthen your brothers and sisters. Peter responded, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the rooster won't crow today before you're denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, when I sent you out without a wallet bag or sandals, you didn't lack anything, did you? They said nothing. Then he said to them, but now whoever has a wallet must take it, and likewise a bag, and those who don't own a sword must sell their clothes and buy one. I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in relation to me. 
and he was counted among the criminals. Indeed, what's written about me is nearing completion. They said to him, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, enough of that. He just left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom. And the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, pray that you won't give in to temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to the disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared. And the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the human one with a kiss? When those around him recognized what was about to happen, they said, Lord, should we fight with our swords? One of them struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Jesus responded, stop, no more of this. He touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come to get him, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a thief? Day after day I was with you in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. But this is your time when darkness rules. After they arrested Jesus, they led him away and brought him to the high priest's house. Peter followed from a distance. When they lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant woman saw him sitting in the firelight. She stared at him and said, This man was with him too. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I don't know him. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. An hour or so later, someone else insisted, This man must have been with him, because he's a Galilean too. Peter responded, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that very moment, while Peter was still speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the Lord's words. Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. The men who were holding Jesus in custody taunted him while they beat him. They, pro they blindfolded him and asked him repeatedly, prophesy, who hit you? Insulting him, they said many other horrible things against him. As morning came, the elders of the people, both chief priests and legal experts came together and Jesus was brought before their council. Stop. They said, if you are the Christ, tell us. He answered, if I tell you, you won't believe. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. From now on, the human one will be seated on the right side of the power of God. They all said, are you God's son then? He replied, you say that I am. Then they said, why do we need <laughs> Why do we need further testimony? We've heard it from his own lips. The whole assembly got up and led Jesus to Pilate and began to accuse him. We have found this man misleading our people, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar and claiming that he is the Christ, the king. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He replied, that's what you say. And then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, 
I find no legal basis for action against this man, but they objected strenuously, saying he agitates the people with his teaching throughout Judea, starting from Galilee all the way here. Hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was from Herod's district, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod, Pilate sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. For he had heard about Jesus and had wanted to see him for quite some time. He was hoping to see Jesus perform some sign. Herod questioned Jesus at length, but Jesus didn't respond to him. The chief priests and the legal experts were there fiercely accusing Jesus. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt. Herod mocked him by dressing Jesus up in elegant clothes and sending him back to Pilate. Pilate and Herod became friends with each other that day. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests and the leaders of the people. You have brought this man, he said to them, you have brought this, you brought this man before me as one who is misleading the people. I have questioned him in your presence and found nothing in this man's conduct that provides a legal basis for the charges you have brought against him. Neither did Herod, because Herod returned him to us. He's done nothing that deserves death. Therefore, I'll have him with and let him go. But they objected strenuously, saying, Sorry. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison because of a riot that had occurred in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, Pilate said to them, why? What wrong has he done? I've found no legal basis for the death penalty in his case. Therefore, I will have him whipped, then let him go. But they were adamant, shouting their demand that Jesus be crucified. Their voices went out. Pilate issued his decision to grant their request. He released the one they asked for who had been thrown into prison, prison because of a riot and murder, but he handed Jesus over to their will. After, as they led Jesus away, they grabbed Simon, a man from Cyrene, who was coming in from the countryside, they put the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. A huge crowd of people was following Jesus. A huge crowd of people followed Jesus, including women who had, who were mourning and wailing for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, don't cry for me, rather cry for yourselves and your children. The time is come. The time will come when they will say, "Happy are those who are unable to become pregnant, the wombs that never gave birth, and the breast that never nursed a child." Then they will say to the mountains, "Fall on us," and to the hills, "Cover us." If they do these things, while the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the king of the Jews, save yourself. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminals spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. 
It was now about noon, and darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock while the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the sanctuary tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my life. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. When the centurion saw what happened, he praised God, saying, It's really true. This man was righteous. All the crowds who had come together to see this event returned to their homes, beating their chests after seeing what had happened. And everyone who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, observing these things. Now there was a man named Joseph who was a member of the council. He was a good and righteous man. He hadn't agreed with the plan and actions of the council. He was from the Jewish city of Arimathea and eagerly anticipated God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb carved out of the rock in which no one had ever been buried. It was preparation day for the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was quickly approaching. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph. They saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was laid in it, then went away and prepared fragrant spices and perfumed oils. They rested on the Sabbath in keeping with the commandment. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. They were, the women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who reported these things, who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people! Your dull minds are keep you, keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting from Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they, ur but they urged him, saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over, so he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight.
They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road, when he explained the scriptures for us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, the Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples discussed what had happened along the road. Then the two disciples discussed what had happened along the road and how Jesus had been known to them, had been made known to them as he broke the bread. How Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be to you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see, for a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that the human one, that everything written about me in all, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I'm sending to you what my father promised but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy, and they were continuously in the temple, praising God.